Hello everybody, my name is Robius and welcome back to Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare historical events and a character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history behind the individual. For today's episode, we will be looking at the history of Bartholomew Roberts. As usual, I warn you that there will be major spoilers in this episode. Additionally, this video will be separated into three segments, his pre-game history, his in-game history, and then a comparison between the depicted history and what really happened. Well, as far as his pre-game history goes, for the first time I can actually offer you one of these individuals' date of birth. Bartholomew Roberts was born on May 17, 1682 in Pembrokeshire, Wales. His birth name was actually John Roberts, but it is assumed that he adopted this alias when he ventured into piracy. Unfortunately, although we know his date of birth, almost nothing is known of him from this period until 1718. Much like in the game, Roberts was the third mate on an African slave ship called the Princess. When his vessel was in port in Ghana, it was captured by pirates, who forced Roberts to join their crew. Since the pirate captain, Milford Haven, was also Welsh, he quickly grew fond of Roberts and made him his ship's navigator, as his advanced abilities soon became evident. And although he was not a willing pirate at first, he soon accepted the lifestyle and developed a motto which was represented in the game in a conversation between Roberts and Kenway. What's your answer? Ah, oh, that old men are sheep. That an old wolf like me deserves every ounce of blood he draws. Following a plan the pirates developed, a few weeks later they arrived at the island of Principe, flying the flags of a British man of war. The overall plan was to take the governor of Principe hostage when they invited him to dine on their vessel. However, when the captain was invited to go dine with the governor on his ship, he was shot by the Portuguese soldiers. The rest of the pirates escaped and in the following days, Roberts was elected as the ship's new captain. This is the moment when we truly meet him in Assassin's Creed 4, following multiple quick encounters beforehand. It's great to see that the game even included his famous speech as he became the ship's commander. For I have dipped my hands in muddied waters, and, withdrawing them, find it better to be a commander than a common man! Roberts' bloody term as captain was christened by his assault on Principe to avenge the death of his captain. During the night, he and his crew snuck onto the island and massacred a large portion of the male population while also stealing as many valuables as they could carry. Afterwards, Roberts captured a few other ships and raided them. He then made his crew vote on where they would continue their operations, and the deciding vote was to go to Brazil. After being in the area of Brazil for multiple weeks, they attacked a fleet of 42 Portuguese ships, where they managed to steal more than 40,000 gold moidores and a lot of jewelry which was meant for the King of Portugal. Taking one of his ships, Roberts went on the hunt of another vessel while he left his crew member, Walter Kennedy, in charge of his other vessel named the Rover. It seems, however, that his trust was misplaced, since at his return, Roberts learned that Kennedy has stolen his ship. Renaming his sloop The Fortune, Roberts established a pirate code that he made his men swear to on the Bible to uphold. Keep the peace, yes. I forbid all gambling upon the deck, for instance, for it leads to more conflict than camaraderie. Desertion during battle is forbidden. And I require that all men keep their pieces and cutlasses clean and fit for service at all times. The code held many tenants, some of which were mentioned in the game. In fact, the code is a little long, so I think I'll link it in the description if you're interested. It's a very impressive element of Roberts' history since it became known overall as the Pirate's Code and was actually showcased in some movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean. Roberts' acts of piracy continued in the area of Barbados and Martinique, where he was very successful, until he was hunted down by some local vessels that were sent by the government, with help of the population. In the attack, Roberts lost many men and was forced to retreat, swearing revenge on Barbados and Martinique. In fact, he even designed a new flag depicting him standing on the skulls of a Barbadian and Martinican. Afterwards, Roberts moved his operation to Newfoundland in what is now considered Canada. In June, he attacked the harbour of Trepassy and captured the entire harbour with all the vessels within. In that day, Roberts had captured over 22 ships and burned all the others when he left. Spending the next few years capturing many vessels, Roberts continued to grow his flotilla and his fortune by raiding many ships from various nationalities. Some point during these attacks, the chief mate from the ship Greyhound joined Roberts' crew and was soon promoted to the role of captain to his consort vessel, the Ranger. Following this, Roberts managed to capture a man-o'-war which happened to be holding the governor of Martinique. 
Keeping good on his promise that he would have his revenge, Roberts hung the governor from the yardarm of his flagship, the Royal Fortune. Following his stint in the Caribbean, Roberts returned to Africa where he captured many other vessels including multiple slave ships. However, his reign over the seas was soon to come to an end. In February in 1722, the HMS Swallow, commanded by Captain Colonel Ogle, found Roberts' fleet in a period of rest. They managed to dispatch one of the vessels without Roberts realizing it. However, when the British were identified, Roberts got dressed in his best robes, as he always did before combat, and prepared to fight with the goal of escaping. As the pirates exposed the side of their vessel with hopes of bypassing the British, Roberts was killed by a grape shot. His crew eventually surrendered, but not before fulfilling their captain's request of burying his body at sea so that he could not be desecrated or used as a symbol against piracy. This entire sequence was rather different in the game since Edward Kenway was the one to kill him, following his betrayal. However, it's interesting to see that they kept the concept of being buried at sea in the story. Roberts' death signified to many the end of the golden age of piracy. Bartholomew Roberts is considered to have been the most successful pirate in history as he managed to capture over 470 vessels within his three year career. We've now reached the summary period for the differences between the real history and the depiction from Assassin's Creed 4. Interestingly enough, there were only two main differences between Roberts' real history and how he was shown in AC4, those being his representation as the sage and his death. This is mainly due to the fact that he is a character who jumps in and out of the story, and through his successful career many of the events were able to fit in well. Evidently, as being a sage, he represented a large role in the AC4 lore built into the story, but there's obviously no historical record of any such thing. As for his death, instead of being hit by a bullet during his escape, he was killed by Edward, but his funeral at sea was carried out in a very similar fashion. And like this, we end episode 4 of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you're building an interest in these historically accurate games, I highly recommend you consider purchasing one of the Assassin's Creed games to get you started. Thank you for watching. Please leave any character or event suggestions you'd like to see in future episodes in the comment section below, and also feel free to offer me any advice on how you'd like to see this series go. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will be seeing you all in a future episode.